Hey guys, J.C. Smith here. Well, just as the title says, why would you buy such a piece of crap? Yeah, why indeed. Okay, so let's talk about this truck. This truck is a 2006 F350 single rear wheel, two wheel drive, 5.4 three valve gas automatic two wheel drive truck with 250,000 miles on it. And obviously is in pretty rough shape. Or is it? Okay, so let's dig into it. First off, it's an ex-railroad truck. You'll notice, uh, probably first off, how the wheels look real goofy. Uh, the railroad has these adapters made right in here that change it from the 8x170 8 bolt pattern to the standard medium duty 8 lug 195 wheel. Okay, the reason they do that is because they run these on the tracks. That is a high wheel setup, which usually has steel wheels on it to guide the truck down the rails. And they drive on top. Well, in order to drive on top, the wheel, the width of the tire track is too wide, so they have to narrow it up. That's how they achieve it. Use the 19.5 wheels and an adapter. Let's it sit back some. There you go. There you have it. So, as you can see, the high rail stuff, if you can see, can't tell on the camera. High rail stuff still in it. Fender smashed up. Bottom of the door is real rusty. That door smashed. That cab corner is smashed and rusty. The bed's all, well, the wind's blowing. What do you think of that? That's not me shaking. That's just the wind blowing the, the side of the bed. Really great tires. The front are probably 75% tread. These ones are probably 95% tread. Got these really cool toolboxes in the back. Got this really massive bumper on here which has a step here that flips out so that you, can, you can get up on it. If you guys ever saw railroad tracks, right, it's gravel, usually granite, comes up, flattens off, and then there's a railroad track on top. So if you have to get in the vehicle or in the bed, usually this is a serious drop. So that's why they do that. Now, they, they have these things custom made, these toolboxes, so they all, these slide open, those open up, the top open, all that good stuff. The spare tire sits down in a little hole there. Over here is another hole. That's designed for uh, uh, oxygen and acetylene tanks right there. Strap those in with a bulkhead protecting the back wheels. And then as you're uh, up and down for the electric over hydraulic, which are turned off, but for the high rail wheels to come up and down. And this side kind of shows the same, the same exact story. Just a, a raggedy old truck, right? Just kind of rough shape. I think uh, body panel wise, we got a tailgate that's extremely nice. We got one fender that's eh, usable and a hood. That's what we got for body parts and some mirrors. As far as the interior goes, it tells the same story. Just a raggedy old truck. Raggedy old truck with 250,000 miles. So, it's got cruise control, no tilt wheel, it's got air conditioning. And intermittent wipers. That's the end of the the end of the options. Seats all torn up. Back seats less than great. Um, all kinds of extra extra wiring, circuit boards, and relays. Those are a lot of great things to keep. All these relays. You know, you can always use those. Uh, circuit board probably not. Some of the wiring, I don't know. Might just be more scrap. You just never know. So, anyways. Let's talk about why I would want to buy something like this. Because, I mean, honestly, it isn't worth much, is it? I mean, this truck is probably... I don't know if this truck is sellable. I, don't, I wouldn't buy this truck with the intentions of driving it down the road. Now, that being said, when I went to go look at this truck, two hours, two hour drive to get there to look at it, okay? Um, obviously, I did buy it, and for good reasons, and I'll show you that in just a second. But let me tell you this, after I looked it over and I found out what I knew, what I thought was the case, once I confirmed what I thought about the truck, I was more than pleased to buy it. Okay, so it ran great, drove great, right down the road, 70 miles an hour, um, cruise control set, warm as toast inside, no troubles at all. Steer Steering was really good. So I'm pl pretty pleased with the purchase. Now, when I went to go look at the truck, what's the first thing I looked at? Of course, was the overall appearance of the truck, but then I lift the hood. And I see they put a battery in it. 
the battery was put in in October of 2017. Then I saw this. They put a new alternator in it. A new tensioner. It's got a new AC compressor, which I don't think that's showing up very well. New AC compressor. It's got a new belt on it. Um, it has a new resistor for the heater. And, you know, these things don't seem like much. I don't know if I can show you this, but it's got new calipers. Of course, you can't see them now. It's got new calipers and front brakes on it. Now, all those just really seem like, yeah, big deal, but it's still kind of a piece of junk. Yeah, kind of, until you get to this side, and you look in here. It probably doesn't show up as well on the camera as it does in person, but this is a remand engine. That's a new dipstick tube. Go figure. Those are not... 250,000 mile 2006 exhaust manifolds from Ohio. They've been replaced. I rolled up underneath the truck. It's two-wheel drive. The transmission has been replaced. So I did some I did some digging. I talked with a guy and what we what we came up with and what he could tell us was that motor has just about 60,000 miles on it and the transmission has just about 45,000 miles on it. Now the rear end has had work done but it has not been replaced. Um, it's been apart, it's had all new bearings put in, it's had a new pinion put in, and it's had outer bearings put in, but it was not replaced. It was, it was uh, re, uh, rebuilt in, in place, but that was done at the Ford dealer. At the same time it got that stuff done, it got some other stuff. These are the things that we found out, of course, before we bought it. So when they did the rear end, they also did this at the Ford dealer. You see that, that blue and white tag right there? That's for a brand new set of leaf springs. It's a leaf spring pack with the helpers. Um, so that was a lot of information. That was really, really good information. And you guys know how much I, I mess around with Ford trucks. Well, a 5.4 engine is something that, you know, we can always use. I don't currently need one, but I sure wouldn't pass up the opportunity to buy one. So, when I looked at it, I started seeing all these great clues that, that really made me think that, you know what, this isn't as big a piece as it looks. And then I started it. It runs phenomenal. Smooth as glass. Sounds fantastic. You guys can hear it. Sure, it's dirty, it's dusty, but it doesn't matter. Now this motor, if I was looking to buy this motor used around here from a yard, this motor would cost me, with, with the miles that this has on it, well into $2,000. Um, that's what I would, I would pay from one of our local yards that I buy from. So being that it is a reman motor, a reman transmission and the rear end's been gone through and let me give you a little bit of a of a sneak here of a little bit of information that might help you one day okay if you can see this right here axle 3l that code means that that's a 373 rear end and it has a limited slip differential so 54 remand engine remand transmission and a 373 limited slip rear end that's been gone through. So, pretty impressive. The thing runs great. It has an ABS light on, and I ran the code, and it's a right front wheel speed sensor code, but the truck is smooth as glass, doesn't miss, doesn't hesitate, doesn't anything. And like I said, we drove this in two and a half hours. Cruise control worked well. I'm sorry, two hours. And um, the cruise control worked fine. It, it had real good tight steering. Uh, the brakes were phenomenal. I mean, the brake pedal is high, high and hard. It's very nice. Um, you know, it's a, it's an all-around pretty decent drive line. Now, I don't need this motor right now, but what's a likeness I'll find an F-150 like we found not long ago with a bad engine, noisy engine, Something like that, pretty reasonable, probably pretty good. Um, and in that situation, that 
would be a perfect donor. Or this truck has the 5R110 transmission, and this one particularly, they make it several ways, with the tailstock and without. If it doesn't have the tailstock, it typically has an adapter with a removable yoke. That's what this has. And what that means to me is I could take that motor and that, that transmission, put it in a, another truck, like say a high mileage truck, or a truck that has a problem with the engine, bolt the transfer case to the back of it, and use it in a four-wheel drive truck. So, to me, there's a lot of value here. Like I said, the motor transmission transfer or motor transmission differential, that's great. Those 195 wheels, great. I, I can use them all the time. The mirrors are great. That fender's okay. A hood, a grill, uh, the rear tailgate, those toolboxes, a buddy of mine will take, I'm, I'm sure of it. Um, as far as, and then once I'll take the body off, I'll keep the wiring harness for the engine, and I will pile all that stuff right in that dump truck, and I'll take it to the scrapyard and get rid of it. And then, a buddy of mine wants the drive line, he wants the frame when I'm done. After I get what I want off of it, he wants the rest of the frame. He has a, a truck that's got a bad frame. This one has a very good clean frame. You wouldn't know it by looking at it. I rolled around underneath it earlier. It's in pretty good shape. So, my point to this whole video is the fact that, yeah, they're not all beautiful and shiny and, you know, gorgeous. Sometimes they look raggedy. But sometimes, if you can look past the forest for the trees, you might just get something. And I think that's what's happened here. We got us a good, solid parts truck. Now, I don't want this thing sitting around long. We're going to take this thing apart pretty quick. As a matter of fact, as soon as uh, the weather warms up slightly, I'm going to rip this thing apart and get rid of everything that we don't want and get it out of our way. So, anyways, and then I'll stick the motor transmission and the rear differential in the shop, and I'll have it when I find something that needs it. Or maybe somebody else I know needs one. So, there you go guys, that's my explanation of why I buy a piece of crap truck, because sometimes they're just not a piece of crap. Alright guys, if you like what I'm doing, give us that thumbs up, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments down below guys, and we will catch you on the next one.